Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today. I'm Jamie, that's Dave, that's Heath. We like to look at a lot of mock drafts. We do a lot of mock drafts. We obviously try to give you as much advice as we can around mock drafts. But our mock drafts aren't always typically reflective of your mock drafts. And we wanted to give you an example of what maybe your mock drafts might look like. So we know we say quarterbacks wait on them until round three or later. We tell you to try to jump in on the tight end run if you want to get one of the top six guys. You know, running back, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, a lot of different strategies we throw at you. Not everybody listens. We get that. So including some of the people that we work with. So we're going to show you a little mock draft here that is taking place. I think still going on as we speak. We're going to show you the first five rounds of our 12-team PPR CBS Sports HQ Newsroom. Now, none of us are in this draft. The only thing close enough to somebody being in this draft associated with the show is our producer, Jack Capitoro. So we're not going to show you his team because he says if we show you his team, he's going to make everybody feel bad. But you see the, the way that the first round unfolded here. And this is, again, PPR. So Devontae Adams, number four overall. Okay, maybe you justify it. Aaron Jones, number five. Okay, maybe you justify it. How does Alvin Kamara fall to number six? I don't understand how Alvin Kamara falls to number six. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me that he falls to number six. I was in a draft last night, PPR. I was picking fourth. I'm like, maybe Kamara's going to fall to me at number four. No, it doesn't happen. He goes in the first three picks. How? This is how the world is, Jamie. Not everybody drafts like we do, and there are some people that actually like to take the players that they want. We don't know who's picking at four and five, but obviously somebody thought enough of Devontae Adams' 2020 season to think that he could repeat that it's again and bad. be an MVP. It's not bad. It's not bad, just not Kamara. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. The, it's not bad. It, it is bad. The hint, well, you should take Kamara, and you should take Jones out of Devontae Adams, too. I think, like... It's a bit of a problem that we have exactly the same players for the first six picks. And I think those are, that's right. That's the order you should draft in. But someone taking a guy that we have seventh, fifth, and a guy that we have eighth, fourth. I'm, I'm going I'm to give you another real-world example of this. So my cousin, who won his league last year with Devonta Adams, has the fourth pick. He says, I'm scared of Kamara. I'm scared of Zeke. Right. I'm scared of Henry. Why should I not just take Devonta Adams again? Because he was the one that led me to a championship. People feel that way. Right, you know, of I, course. I don't do it. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's, he's, in that, he's in that boat. All right, so there you go. Alvin Kamara falls to six. A little bit of a surprise. Uh, you saw the rest of the first round. Let's show you now round two. And so here we go. As we said, you know, Dave, we had this conversation. We were going through quarterback tiers. I said, people aren't going to draft the quarterbacks after 35th overall, I think was the number that you said. And this is why. Patrick Mahomes goes at 14. Josh Allen goes at 21. Uh, Heath, you got to be a little excited. You see Josh Jacobs in there at, at 20th overall. So somebody's listening to you and saying that Josh Jacobs is still going to have a big season. I, I want to be clear. I did not tell anybody to take Josh Jacobs <laughs> at 20 overall. <laughs> Heath Cummings' advice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Saquon Barkley fall into the second round. So there you see some of the things that we've been talking about here. But again, this is what drafts happen. People tend to fall in love with the names that they know. They tend to stick with guys that have helped them previously. Maybe, you know, like Josh Jacobs was good at times last year. But again, a different approach to round two. So Josh Jacobs going here at 20th overall, and you see some of the picks there. We get to round three now, and you see more quarterbacks, at least one in particular, coming off the board. And again, this is what people do. Aaron Rodgers, we say he's not a top five quarterback. Being drafted here, however, as a top three quarterback so Dave make someone feel better about taking Aaron Rodgers in the third round absolutely not <laughs> I'm not gonna do it I think it's a terrible pick and it's not because I think Aaron Rodgers is gonna be a straight-up bust but at this ADP I think it's a terrible bust because there are other players that you could draft at that spot that you'll see in rounds four and round five that you would rather have ahead of Aaron Rodgers knowing that you can find a quarterback who should be comparable to what Aaron Rodgers will be this year not comparable to what Aaron Rodgers was next year Later on in your draft? Last year. Yeah. I, I, last I think year. I, I can very easily make them feel better. When you're in a draft with people who are not going to draft according to rankings or according to ADP, then you know that in round five, round six, round seven, round eight, you're going to have fourth, fifth, sixth rounders available to you still. So it makes more sense to go fill your quarterback position because you'll be able to find good running backs and wide receivers later because these guys aren't going to take the right ones. How do you say that with a straight face? It's, I, I felt <laughs> it with my heart. Uh, it, it does push down value. And, and Calvin Ridley was a third round pick in this So draft, was Waller. So, and so was Waller. Kittle went in the second round. Yeah. So based on average draft position, though, that's kind of what we've seen. But still uh, pushing down good players. And Calvin Ridley falls to round three. Let's show you now round four and another couple of surprises that uh, you know we necessarily wouldn't advise. But you see things happening like Chase Claypool, for example, going 42nd overall ahead of Amari Cooper. Mike Evans, you could debate that one clearly. Adam Thielen, you could debate that one. And Chris Godwin. Even Evans going ahead of Godwin is not something we see a lot of. But uh, Ch Chase Claypool, look, I mean, he's going to have to play pretty significantly better than he did last year to justify going ahead of some of these guys unless he just has that much of a breakout season. I, I love the fact, I mean, 
you wanted me to talk about Chase Claypool, but I love the fact that even in this draft, Lamar Jackson, where quarterbacks go early, still gets to be a value behind some of the names yeah. we've seen. And yeah. DeAndre Swift, when we had like 18 running backs taken in the first two rounds, another 10 in round three, and there's DeAndre Swift at the end of round four. I think both two of those guys should probably go ahead and chase Claypool. So. And somebody's listening because Miles Gaskin is a fourth round pick. Borderline third round pick, yeah, yeah. going 37th overall. So Gaskin ahead of DeAndre Swift. I know I like that. I know Heath, I don't think you like that as much let's go now to round five and look this is where i think things start to normalize a little bit from the standpoint of the 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 second group of tight ends pitts andrews hawkinson going around five i have no problem with that whatsoever so this is reflective of a lot of the drafts that we've seen uh miles sanders falling to round five that's fine jerry judy going into round five so someone excited about him deontay johnson falling to round five that's a pretty good bargain price there uh julio jones i think we're gonna see him in that round four round five range his adp is in round five uh dak prescott that's a great buy Oh yeah, love Aaron Rodgers yeah. went in the third round. Jackson and Murray went in the fourth uh, in the fourth round, and getting Prescott in the sixth round at the excuse me end of the fifth round, just before the sixth round there. So, uh, good job in terms of drafting Dak Prescott there for the fantasy manager who did that. So let's show you some of these rosters here, and uh, I don't know exactly. I think it's going to be listed uh, seventh overall for Greg. So Greg's. Got the seventh overall pick. so And this is the Rodgers team. And this is the Claypool team. So Greg is uh, oh taking gosh. some chances here in, in how he built this roster. So the, the strength is obviously going to be, assuming everyone's healthy, Eckler and DeAndre Hopkins. But <laughs> you got to hope yeah. that Rodgers delivers third-round type of production. I, I, I will say this, Dave, because you said it, and I agree with you. You shouldn't take Rodgers there. If you were to say to somebody right now, forget about the other quarterbacks, too. Aaron okay. Rodgers is a point off of what he did last year. Would oh, then he should be, he should be. I don't know if I would take him in round three, but I would take him as, as third the quarterback. third quarterback okay. off Same. the board. Uh, he would be a round four pick for me if that was the case. He would still be behind Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Because we're expecting him right. to get closer to what his numbers were 2019 and in, in that range, 2018, 2017, when he was 23 fantasy points or less. Last year, spiked to 29 fantasy points per game. So there's uh, Greg's team, so taking some chances. Uh, Gianna Sanchez's team here, we got uh, with the second overall pick. So Dalvin Cook, strong selection there. This team's pretty solid. Crushed you know? it. Yeah, I think, you know, taking advantage of the Deontay Johnson value, obviously Calvin Ridley value. Uh, James White's a very sneaky flex play in PPR. Corey Davis in round eight. That's not bad. Right. <laughs> We've seen him. We've seen worse. Go in in, uh, in round six. I guess a little bit of surprise to see Chris Carson in round two. You know, so that's uh, not something that we've seen. But, yeah, um, for sure, the round two thing. But if you're if you're telling me that you've got... Got Ridley top, in round three and Carson in round right. two. You know, you flip those. A top five quarterback and a pair of top 15 running backs and a top five wide receiver and Deontay Johnson exactly. is your number two. Like, this, yep. this is a good squad. So, yep. so far, we like Gianna's team over Greg's team. Now, let's show you Niata's team at fourth overall and... She started with Devontae Adams, uh, so taking a little bit of a gamble, but okay. that's a pretty nice receiving core. We got Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, and Jamar Chase. Wow. Very solid tight end. And, and Mark, Mark Andrews, Andrews. And still and ends Josh up with Allen. DeAndre Swift and Daryl Henderson. What the hell happened? Plus Josh Allen. So you can go a little bit askew from what we tell you, go, go a little bit off of the rankings. And still end up with a pretty good roster. Heath, I think you would sign off on this quite a bit. I was going to say, I really thought as I was reading this, you ought to use my rankings to put together a team. And then I saw Odell Beckham at the bottom. And obviously, that's not true. So. But round eight, <laughs> round eight but is not round bad. Eight, round eight's perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure Niata has a better team than Jack. She's got, <laughs> wow. seven, she's got seven players that I would take in round six or higher on this roster. It, it, that's look, a good and, sign. And again, this is knowing your league. So Niata takes Devonta Adams fourth overall, not knowing how the draft is going to unfold. But you see... People do different things. So still able to get A.J. Brown, still able to get DeAndre Swift, Josh Allen, all these quality players. And if Henderson and Swift hit with this receiving core tight end and quarterback, she may be tough to beat. All right, let's show you a couple other lineups here. This is uh, Thomas Schaefer's third overall team, uh, picking from third overall, excuse me. So starting Ooh. in round one with Derrick Henry, getting a pretty good running back uh, situation there. But going double tight end, yeah. taking Darren Waller in the third round, Kyle Pitts in the fifth round. What do you think, though, about the two Vikings wide receivers? Because this is a team that we expect to be a little bit less in terms of volume, but I do think that the Irv Smith injury is a boost for both of those guys. But I don't know how much we would love going into our season with both Jefferson and Thielen. I can't imagine many weeks where both of them will bust, especially in a PPR league. And I could see many weeks just looking at their schedule where they could both be good. And admit it, guys, you've both thought about taking two of the top six tight ends. Thomas had the stones to do it. And I think it could actually end up paying off for him using Pitts in the flex. And if they both end up being great, he's got some trade chips to make to really improve that number two running back. I think the first time Adam Azer ever called me an idiot moron was when I took Travis Kelsey and George Kittle in a draft a couple of years ago. So it worked that year. He calls you that quite a bit. Yeah. You know, I, I go back to something just with the Vikings that, uh, and, and I believe Thomas is a Vikings fan. 
Um, we had Stefan Diggs with us when he was still in Minnesota on a Super Bowl set. And we asked him, how does it work? You know, one guy's good one week, one guy's good another week. And, you know, sometimes they were good together, but maybe Jefferson and, and Thielen work a little bit better together from a fantasy perspective than maybe Thielen and Stefan Diggs did once upon a time. Troy's team from 10th overall, uh, very high upside quarterback there, took the, the gamble on Saquon Barkley in round two. First pick was Travis Kelsey, so hard to fault him there. Uh, has some very good receivers, you know, especially if C.D. Lamb hits, but, you know, two high-end two high end number three receivers that could be starters. Love Damien Harris as a flex there, uh, but the running backs, I think, are going to make or break this team with Barkley, Montgomery, and Harris. I would sign up for these running backs immediately. I love the depth that he's built. I think the receivers are good despite spending two of his first three picks and actually all three of his picks on two running backs and a tight end, which is something that I advocate for. Getting Jalen Hurts in round nine, I love that. I think there's plenty of upside there as well. Yeah, you need somebody to become a number one wide receiver because you don't really have a number one wide receiver. And I'm a little worried. You keep knocking CD Lamb. I'm not knocking him. He's a number. We we all have him ranked as a number two. He's 13th for me. That's (laughs) That's number two. (laughs) It's a 14 team. All right, Austin's team. Last one we're going to show you here. This is from what spot, Jack? 11th? 11th spot. Uh, So, I know you're going to like this one. This is uh, the heavy on the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, and Tyreek Hill. So, going back to back to back, Chiefs, Hill. Mahomes, Edwards Hilaire, and former chief in Kareem Hunt. Uh, Cooper Cup, Emmanuel Sanders. This is a strong team. If Zach Ertz is good and Gus Edwards is great, we've got a pretty good roster here. Is, is Austin part of the ownership group? Is, is that, <laughs> Austin Hunt? Austin Hunt? Go. Is that, is that, that what's going on here? No, this is, it's a, I love the top half, half of this, all the way down to five. Uh, you may have to do a little work on the waiver wire for that number three wide receiver and tight end. If I'm looking at this right, there were three games last year where a Chiefs quarterback, running back, and wide receiver each hit the marks of success in fantasy. We're talking 22 points in PPR, 15 points in PPR for running back and wide receiver. All right, so uh, we'll see which uh, team. We'll revisit that team throughout the course of the season. But uh, for now, Jack Capitorto says he has the best roster, the one we did not see. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.